assalamu alaikum dear audience i welcome all in today's 29th lecture on pathology today day 1 of shock before we will discuss about shock we want to recapitulate suppose this is heart from the heart blood comes out and this oxygenated blood supplies from the body lateral the blood again comes to the right atrium then in the right ventricle then it goes to the lungs while it is purified and it comes in the heart this is the cardiovascular system and this is the circulation of blood dear audience if if heart and blood vessels that is cardiovascular system if the cardiovascular system is defective if the cardiovascular system is defective what will happen there will be disturbances in the carrying of blood to the tissue protoid again if cardiovascular system is normally functioning but blood volume is decreased first one if cardiovascular system is defective and blood volume is normal or if the cardiovascular system is normal functioning but blood volume is decreased what will happen there will be hypoperfusion of the tissue there will be hypoperfusion of the tissue again suppose this is the heart it pumps blood comes out again after circulation throughout the body blood goes to the heart then to lung again comes to heart and if there is defect in the cardiovascular system but normal blood flow but normal blood flow or if cardiovascular system is normally functioning but blood volume is decreased then there will be hypoperfusion throughout the body and if this hypoperfusion threats life this is called shock now come to what is shock this pain systemic systemic wide spread hypoperfusion of tissue due to disparity between cardiovascular system and blood volume that may threaten life is called shock there days systemic wide spread hypoperfusion of tissue due to disparity between cardiovascular system and blood volume that may threaten life is called shock again if there is disparity between this cardiovascular system and the blood volume and this 
disparity may be due to defect in the cardiac system or due to decreased blood volume. And if this disparity threatens life, this is called shock. Again, systemic widespread hyperperfusion of tissue due to disparity between cardiovascular system and blood volume that may threaten life is called shock. Now come to classification of shock. Hypovolemic shock, hypovolemic shock means shock due to hypovolemia, shock due to decreased blood volume. What are the causes of hypovolemia? Causes of hypovolemia, blood loss. that is acute blood loss, diarrhea, excessive vomiting, extensive burn, extensive trauma. These are the different causes of hypovolemia that is, these are the causes of decreased blood volume. Cardiogenic shock. Shock due to disease of heart. Cardiogenic shock. What are the diseases of heart that will lead to shock? The common disease is myocardial infarction. endocarditis, ventricular arrhythmia. So these are the different causes of cardiogenic shock. Neurogenic shock as in spinal cord injury, anesthetic accidents, anesthetic accidents. Anaphylactic shock. septic shock. So these are the different types of shock, hypervolumic shock, cardiogenic shock, neurogenic shock, anaphylactic shock, septic shock. There it is, again, we want to recapitulate, shock is the systemic widespread hypoperfusion of tissue due to disparity between cardiovascular system and blood volume that may threaten life is called shock. First come to hypovolemic shock. There remains in shock the end result of shock is the hypotension. End result of shock is hypotension. End result of shock is hypotension. And in shock, there is decreased effective circulating blood volume. What happens in shock? 
there is hypertension and there is decreased effective circulating blood volume. Decreased effective circulating blood volume. So, end result of shock is hypertension and in shock there is decreased effective circulating blood volume. What happens in hypovolemic shock? That is mechanism of hypovolemic shock. Hypovolemia that is decreased blood volume that is decreased blood volume. If there is decreased blood volume, what will happen? There will be decreased cardiac output. Decreased cardiac output. If there is decreased cardiac output, what will happen? There will be decreased effective circulating blood volume decreased effective circulating blood volume. As there is decreased effective circulating blood volume, there will be widespread systemic hypoperfusion. Widespread hypoperfusion. and ultimately there is shock. So this is the mechanism of hypovolemic shock. Now come to cardiogenic shock. Generalists have told you the common cause of cardiogenic shock is myocardial infarction. Myocardial infarction, erodes to know localized area of ischemic necrosis, either due to a sudden arterial occlusion or impaired venous return, is called infarct. And the phenomenon is called infarction. If coronary artery blockage, there will be ischemic necrosis of the myocardium and this is called myocardial infarction. So if, suppose this is heart and if there is myocardial infarction, what will happen? If there is myocardial infarction, the heart will become weak and heart cannot pump properly. As the heart cannot pump properly, there will be decreased cardiac output. Decreased cardiac output. As there is decreased cardiac output, there will be decreased effective circulating blood volume. Decreased effective circulating Black volume. As there is decreased circulating, effective circulating blood volume, there will be hypoperfusion of tissue widespread. Widespread hypoperfusion and that will lead to shock. So, this is the mechanism of cardiogenic shock. Now, come to Anaphylactic shock.
it is immunoglobulin E mediated hypersensitivity reaction. It is IgE mediated hypersensitivity reaction. What happens here? One is systemic. Vasodilatation, another is increased vascular permeability. Nowadays, in IgE mediated hypersensitive reaction, there occurs systemic vasodilatation and increased vascular permeability. How this systemic vasodilatation and increased vascular permeability? may lead to shock. Now come to that point, systemic vasodilation systemic vasodilation what will happen? There will be dilatation of the vessels. So there is a pooling of blood. As pooling of blood following vasodilatation, there will be decreased cardiac output. Cardiac output is decreased. As decreased cardiac output, there will be decreased effective circulating blood volume. There will be decreased circulating, effective circulating blood volume. Again, come to increased vascular permeability. the endothelial lining. If increased vascular permeability, if increased vascular permeability, what will happen? Increased vascular permeability, there will be reduction of blood volume. As reduction of blood volume, there will be decreased cardiac output. As decreased cardiac output, there will be decreased effective circulating blood volume. Decreased effective circulating blood volume. The audience will see it is IgE mediated hypersensitive reaction. There is systemic vascular addition that leads to decreased effective circulating blood volume. There is increased vascular permeability that leads to ultimately decreased effective circulating blood volume. As there is decreased effective circulating blood volume, there will be widespread hypoperfusion. And there will be shock. So this is the mechanism of shock in anaphylactic shock that is IgE mediated hypersensitivity reaction. Now come to neurogenic shock, mechanism of neurogenic shock.
their audience, you know, if this is the blood vessel, and this is the lining in the thalia, this is the blood vessel oval. In normal anatomical and physiological condition, there is vascular tone, partial state of contraction. That is, there is vascular tone. If there is neurogenic shock, what will happen? In neurogenic shock, vascular tone is decreased. As vascular tone is decreased in neurogenic shock, what will happen? There will be relaxation of blood vessels. Relaxation of blood vessels. As there is relaxation of blood vessels, there will be pooling of blood in the blood vessel. Pooling of blood. As pooling of blood, there will be decreased cardiac output. As there is decreased cardiac output, there will be decreased effective circulating blood volume. Decreased circulating. Decreased circulating. Decreased effective circulating blood volume. So, vascular tone is decreased, relaxation of blood vessel, pooling of blood, decreased cardiac output, and it will lead to decreased effective circulating blood volume. There will be high perfusion. Shock. Now come to stages of shock. Now come to stages of shock. There are three stages of shock. One is early compensated state. One is early compensated stage, progressive decompensated stage, and third one is irreversible stage of shock. So one is early compensated stress, progressive decompensated stress, and irreversible stress of shock. Now come to first early compensated stress. Dear audience, suppose fifteen percent. Blood is lost. If fifteen percent blood is lost, there is definitely hypovolemia. There is reduction of blood volume. In this stage, what happens to compensate this loss of blood and to recover from the shock? This is the early compensated stage. What happens? The mechanism. There is vasoconstriction. Vasoconstriction. Then, as there is reduction in blood volume due to 15% of blood loss, 
than the decreased cardiac output. Decreased cardiac output. As there is decreased cardiac output, what will happen? There will be decreased renal blood flow. Following decreased cardiac output, there will be decreased renal blood flow. As decreased renal blood flow from the juxtaglomerular complex, there will be release of renin. So the, from kidney, there will be release of renin. And this Secreted renin is associated with activation of angiotensin excess. Following activation of renin angiotensin excess, there will be release of aldosterone release of aldosterone and this aldosterone acts upon the The renal tubules and absorption of absorption of sodium and water. And as there is absorption of sodium and water from the tubules, there will be Collection of blood group. Patient recovers from shock. Patient recovers from shock without any supplementation from outside like infusion or transfusion. This is the early compensated stage of shock. The patient can compensate the shock and patient can recover from stage of shock without any supplementation from outside like infusion or transfusion. Now come to progressive decompensated stage of shock. Progressive decompensated stage of shock. Mechanism Suppose there is 15% blood loss, there will be hypovolemia. And following hypovolemia, first one is vasoconstriction. Due to decreased group, there will be decreased cardiac output. Due to decreased cardiac output, there will be decreased renal blood flow. 
slowly decreased renal blood flow. Again, there is release of renin from juxtaglobular complex. And this renin is associated with activation of renin angiotensin excess. As there is activation of a renin angiotensin axis, there will be a release of aldosterone. This aldosterone acts upon the renal tubule. Aldosterone acts upon the renal tubule and there is absorption of sodium and water. Sodium and water absorption. Although there is absorption of sodium and water, patient cannot recover from this stage. Patient cannot recover. Patient cannot recover. At this stage, if you give supplementation like infusion or transfusion, then patient can recover from shock. Again, if you don't give any infusion or transfusion, all the mechanism is activated with the body, but patient cannot recover. But if you give supplementation by transfusion or infusion, patient can be caught. So, if you give supplementation like infusion or transfusion, then patient recovers. recovers from shock. Now come to what is the difference between our decompensatory stage and progressive decompensatory stage. In both stages, body tries to compensate. In early compensatory stage, compensation is without any supplementation, but in the progressive decompensatory stage, if supplementation is given, then there is recovery from shock. This is the difference between early compensatory stage and progressive decompensatory stage. Now come to irreversible stage of shock. In irreversible stage of shock, There is vasoconstriction. There is activation of renin angiotensin axis. Activation of renin angiotensin axis. There is giving of supplementation giving of supplementation either by transfusion or infusion still then patient will not recover still then patient will not recover from shock. 
and this is known as irreversible stage of shock. There it is. I've told you what is the definition of shock? Systemic widespread hyperperfusion of tissue due to disparity between cardiovascular system and blood volume that the third lung is called shock. I've told you the end stage of shock is hypotension and in shock there is decreased effective circulating blood volume. I've told you hypovolemic shock, cardiogenic shock, neurogenic shock, anaphylactic shock, septic shock. In hypovolemic shock, shock is due to hypovolume of blood. In cardiogenic shock, is due to disease of heart. Anaphylactic shock, it is IgE mediated hypersensitivity reaction. Neurogenic shock, there is decreased vascular tone that is associated with pooling of blood and also there is increased vascular permeability. I've told you stages of shock, early compensated stage of shock. At this stage, patient can recover by himself or herself without any supplementation. But the progressive decompensated stage of shock, patient can recover only when he or she is supplemented by infusion or transfusion. But the irreversible stage of shock, patient cannot recover, although patient is supplemented with infusion or transfusion. Good up to this, thanks all.